our favorite millennial Brooklynites are going off the air. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things we loved and hated about the girl's ending. Yeah, he was gay. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at the best and worst moments from the sixth and final season of the show. This is simple, there's too much history here. There's too much good stuff for us not to try. Number 10, hated Jess has declined. She's not getting married. As some of you may have already guessed, we're getting married. We are. <laughs> Jessa is a tough character that always stands up for herself, but sometimes she takes things a little bit too far. Her feud with Hannah was caused by her lack of empathy and her tendency to put herself before others. We wish Jessa had some redemption rather than coming full circle and hooking up with a stranger in a bar bathroom in a scene reminiscent of season one. We don't necessarily get to see whether Jessa and Adam get a happy ending, though it's implied by the fact that she lets him into the apartment. This relationship is deeply flawed, so it would have been nice to see Jessa step out on her own instead. Hannah told me everything about you. Everything! Number 9. Loved. Ray found love. Finally. Turn this potential energy into kinetic energy. Stop being a cartographer and become an explorer. What do you really want to do? Ray Plashansky, cafe owner and resident grump, has been the voice of reason on girls since day one, but that hasn't always been easy for him. Or, alternatively, you could go, we could not meet up later, and instead we could just break up. Although we thought he would rekindle his past romance with Shoshana after giving Toxic Marnie the boot, Go Ray, we were pleasantly surprised to see him meet and fall for his polar opposite, Abigail. Yoshi from work? Okay, that is very cool, because he looks like an Asiatic One Direction member. While hanging out with Shosh, Ray meets her former co-worker Abigail, an incredibly cheerful and insightful person. That's my question. That's my question too. That's my question. <laughs> the two instantly connect, and the last time we see Ray is him riding a lit-up merry-go-round sharing a shy kiss with Abigail. And can we say we couldn't be happier for him? Would you object greatly if I kissed you? Number 8. Loved. Elijah is going to be a star. What'd you do with Hannah? I'm here! You're dancing! Elijah's character arc is a broad one, first being introduced as Hannah's college ex, who announces to her that he's gay, shattering her self-confidence. They eventually become friends, then roommates, and by the end of the series, Elijah was just as much as a main character as any of the girls. I got the part, and white men can't jump the f***ing musical spec. Are you feckless whores? We were so happy that he finally found his calling and realized that his flair for the dramatic could actually be turned into a career. He may not be able to play basketball, but his singing and acting chops made him a shoe in for the stage. Let me be your star. Number 7. Loved. The show didn't go with the traditional finale route. Nobody said this was going to be easy. Nobody guaranteed this would be fun. While most TV series finales end on a happy note, or at least a note of finality, girls decided to take a path less traveled. It has never been a show where formulas have been adhered to, so it seems fitting that the final episode didn't feature the girls all getting together for brunch and laughing their problems away. I don't need to be happy. Why? It's just not my time. This is important. Hannah's my best friend. This ending is much more realistic than many others that came before it, because in real life, there's never a point where everything is nicely tied up and there are no remaining loose ends. The creators of Girls stuck to their ideals by deciding not to give fans a typical final episode. <coughs> Number 6. Hated. The girls didn't patch things up. So this guy's making me bananas. I never experienced anything like it. While Girls initially appeared to follow the four friends in New York formula, Created by Sex and the City, as time went on, it was clear that the beauty of female friendship wasn't exactly the theme of the show. Well, maybe you should try what I do, which is I don't expect anything from any of you. I'm so f***ing sick of all of you. In the second to last episode, Goodbye Tour, viewers saw the four girls together for the last time and it wasn't the resolution that many fans wanted. 
Hannah had been out of touch with both Shoshana and Jessa for a long time, but decided to crash a party at Shosh's place that ended up being her engagement party. Shosh confronts the other girls and lets them know that she has no interest in keeping up relationships with them. I have come to realize how exhausting and narcissistic and ultimately boring this whole dynamic is. Number 5. Loved. Hannah and Jessa make up. Hannah is my dearest friend. She will always come first. We may not be talking right now, and I hope to God that that changes. While there wasn't exactly closure for every relationship on the show, at least one got a somewhat happy ending. Fans of Girls probably weren't expecting for things to ever be completely patched up between Jessa and Hannah after Jessa and Adam started dating. They were doing it behind my back but right in front of my face. The two spend the last two seasons fighting over this, causing their friendship to completely deteriorate. In the second to last episode, however, Jessa and Hannah talk, showing the audience that while they may not be braiding each other's hair anytime soon, they have made peace with one another. I am sorry for... for everything. I don't really... You don't have to be sorry, it's okay. Number 4. Hated. Marnie is still selfish. I would like to help you raise your baby. Oh, Jesus Christ. This series finale begins with Marnie trying to convince Hannah that she should come to live upstate with her to help look after baby Grover. To an outsider, this may seem like a loving and selfless act, but anyone who knows Marnie knows that she probably has ulterior motives. I am a good friend, unlike you, you are a bad friend! Marnie loves to be recognized for what a great friend she is, and it seems convenient that she's making this offer when she currently has no place to live. Hannah calls her out in the episode, claiming that Marnie imagined an idealized version of their lives that is totally unrealistic. Okay, I'm sorry we didn't make any jam. I'm sorry you didn't meet like a hot woodworker. But this is reality. It's happening now, and you suck at it. Number three, loved. Hannah and Adam didn't end up together. Please. I can't. In series finales, it's typical for will-they-or-won't-they couples to end up together, even if their relationship has been a contentious one. Kiss me if they cry, baby. Ross and Rachel did it, Carrie and Big did it, but there was no way the creators of Girls would write something so expected. I want to raise your child with you. Instead, they gave us something even better. Rather than create a fabricated happy ending for a couple who just wasn't meant to be, they gave us an entire episode of what it would have looked like if Adam and Hannah were together, but then let the characters and the audience realize that it just wasn't right. I'm gonna go to my house and write, and then probably try to go to sleep, you. Well, I guess I'm gonna grocery shop. Number two, hate it. It was pretty bleak. Excuse me? Where am I? We never expected girls to give us a typical happy ending, because that just isn't their style. We still wish, however, that there had been a little more hopefulness in the final episodes. The final three episodes feature Adam and Hannah realizing they'll never be able to make it work, the girls deciding to abandon their friendships, and Hannah leaving New York. In the finale itself, we see Hannah struggling with motherhood, and viewers are left wondering how she will possibly make it work. But he hates me, the guy at the shop, right, is more interested in my boobs than he is, so why don't you just swaddle him? Some people thought that this was fitting for a show that attempted to show a more realistic view of life that is often glossed over on TV, but we still would have liked a slightly more positive outcome for the characters we had come to love. So, uh, what brings you out here without, uh, pants and shoes? Oh, um, I had a baby pretty recently, so... Mm. Sounds about right. Number one, loved. Hannah becomes an adult. Well, sort of. This is not a joke. Showing your vagina to your boss is not an okay thing to do. It wasn't sexual, Fran. It was so I would get out of trouble. Girls is centered around the premise that its characters are selfish and often immature. While Hannah has come a long way since her cringeworthy season one proclamations, she still struggles with issues just like anyone else does. Instead of showing Hannah completely changed by having a child, the show went a different route. No, no, guys, I got it. I got it. Having a baby may not be as easy as Hannah expected it to be, but in the end, she steps up to be a mother in all her neurotic glory. Hannah is no longer the lost girl we first met, and she is shown taking a maternal role with a teen she meets in her neighborhood. Exactly, because she loves you more than anything else in the world, and she knows you're the most important thing, even if it means being emotionally abused by a brat day in and day out. Also, after having a hard time nailing down a career, it seems that Hannah is finally getting the recognition she deserves. You write for the internet, and boy do you write. And when I read your stuff, it's honest, it's frank, it's here I am, take it or leave it. Yeah. You are a 
Hotshot. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.